Hello everyone, um, this is a video about The Echo in Green, which is a poem by William Blake in his collection of poems, uh, Songs of Innocence and of Experience. This video is aimed at students studying Blake as part of their English literature qualification, whatever the specification might be. And these videos are designed to be quite short, giving you the key concepts of um, the majority of the poems um, in the collection. Uh, the Echoing Green comes from the collection of Innocence, which was published first before both books were brought together to form one um, edition. Um, so let's look at the poem overall. Again, it's a relatively short poem, but Blake is known for having quite short poems anyway, particularly in this collection. Um, and one of the things that I always say to students is you can often guess which book of poems it comes from by the tone and how nature is depicted in the poem. So in the Innocence poems, for example, nature is often seen as much more idyllic. Uh, the, the treatment of the pastoral is more bucolic. Um, the language is happier, merrier um, and so on. And there isn't really a sense of suffering or danger, as you might expect in the experienced poems. So no surprise if we look at some of the phrases and words in this poem, we can clearly place it within the Innocence collection because of the sense of merriment and enjoyment that is um, going on. So if you haven't read the poem, you might want to have a either pause the video now and have a quick read, um, but I'm going to move on and, and going to talk about the summary of the poem. And I'm, I think I'm right in saying that this is one of Blake's more simpler poems in the collection. It perhaps doesn't have the same level of ambiguity as some of the other poems in the uh, collection have. Um, so in terms of this poem, on a spring day, a fate takes place in a village uh, and all the residents, uh, regardless of their ages, are invited. Uh, for those of you that aren't sure, a village green tends to be a piece of grass in the middle of a village. Um, usually around where the war memorial is, but not always. And that village green is used for lots of different things throughout the year, such as fates and fairs and other uh, country, uh, rural, uh, traditional kind of festivals. Um, in this poem, uh, there is a strong sense of community cohesion uh, because people of all ages come together. And it's quite a utopian and idealised depiction, perhaps, of rural village life. As the day progresses, uh, the children get tired because they've been playing a lot and everyone seems to go home at dusk. Um, and one of the last images that we have in this poem is the sun setting. And the children go to their parents and other adults. And the inference that we make is that those parents and adults are offering those children protection um, from the night, uh, which is a metaphor for the perhaps more ominous world of adulthood and experience. So in this poem, there is a real sense of childhood innocence, but also the, um, the undeniable fact that we're not children forever and that there will come a time when we have to grow up and enter the world of adulthood, which perhaps isn't as sheltered or isn't as utopian, perhaps, as childhood is. So there's a sense that, that childhood is transient. So if we look at the first stanza, um, first of all, as we can see in the box, there is a semantic field of happiness and merriment. Uh, we've got words like happy, merry, sing and cheerful. And those words continue as well into the other stanzas. So this is just looking at this first stanza. And as I have said earlier, semantic fields are quite useful to talk about for Blake because there are, there are often two main semantic fields for Blake. One of them is nature and the pastoral, or sometimes known as the green world. Um, and the other is a sense of happiness and joy. And those two tend to go hand in hand because what Blake is saying is um, when nature uh, and humans are happy, uh, there's this kind of symbiotic equilibrium that exists between uh, both uh, people and nature. So nature is often used as a metaphor to reinforce that sense of happiness. The first line tells us that the sun does come up. So it's early in the morning and that suggests that this fate um, is going to be on that day, <clears throat> excuse me, and the poem is therefore a narrative of the day. We've also got reference to spring. Blake also has a poem called Spring in this collection, um, and spring 
The connotations of spring, of course, are renewal and rebirth, the sense of newness. We've got reference to birds, the skylark and the thrush and other birds, um, suggest that the birds are quite happy, they're singing along, suggesting uh, they are indulging as well in that collective sense of happiness and gaiety. Uh, if you think of a poem, for example, like The Schoolboy, the, ca the bird is caged, which is often, a, a, again, another kind of image used to show oppression or entrapment. But here the birds are enjoying themselves, they're free and they're flying. So there is a bucolic happiness here uh, and a, um, a happy presentation of the pastoral. And we're told that the bells are, are cheerfully ringing, uh, so they're also creating this sense of happiness. And there are sports and games being played on the village green. So again, another key uh, symbol that Blake often focuses on is, is the freedom of play. Uh, and that stems from, of course, philosophers like John Locke and uh, Jean Jacques Rousseau, who were saying at the time that children don't just learn in classrooms behind desks, but they also learn by being outside in the green world, in the environment. So play can also be an educational thing uh, here, which also is full of freedom. As we move into the second stanza, we have this character Old John mentioned, uh, and that tells us that the old people in this community are getting a sense of satisfaction from seeing the young people play. So unlike other poems in the Songs of Experience, for example, where it's inferred that the older people are feeling bitter because they've lost their childhood, here um, Old John and the other old folk are enjoying seeing the children play because it's perhaps a remedy or an antidote uh, for their own world of experience. Seeing the children play brings them happy memories of when they also had that um, sense of freedom, perhaps. Those old people are laughing and they're sitting under an oak tree and an oak is symbolic of knowledge and wisdom and strength. So I think the idea here is that those old people represent a degree of knowledge and wisdom because as we grow older, we're supposed to get wiser. So I think here that these um, old, uh, these elder people are designed to be seen in a positive way as perhaps having something to offer um, all generations. The, the uh, old folk are laughing at the children's play. Uh, the use of the pronoun are perhaps suggests that the speaker is a child um, enjoying the day. And there is that strong sense of community cohesion um, or alternatively, you might argue that this is perhaps an idealised depiction of a poorer rural community, uh, that just because they're happy, perhaps, does not mean that they aren't in poverty, because it was also possible to live in the countryside and be in poverty. And obviously poverty is often a theme which Blake uh, discusses uh, mostly in the Songs of Experience. So the old people are enjoying the memories of the day. It's very utopian. Uh, and it's and it's a pretty kind of uh, perfect day, it seems. But the mood begins to change slightly as we enter the third and final stanza. Uh, the language begins to uh, become a little bit more melancholy, uh, melancholic and a little bit more um, ominous of something uh, less pleasant on the horizon. So um, the, the children become weary and because they've been playing all day, and the sun is also descending, the sun is also going down, so it's sunset. Um, and in Blake, the sunset or dusk is often a common metaphor that's used to represent a change and, and to create a sense of transience. So I think what Blake is perhaps saying here is that we don't stay like children forever. There will come a time when we have to grow up and enter the world of experience. So perhaps the, the sun setting here is again suggesting that this perfect day is is um, is not going to last forever, and that's represented by the sun uh, going down. Um, the sports have to come to an end because it's getting dark, and the children find their mothers and sisters and brothers, and they and they all go home, and they are likened in a simile to birds in a nest settling down, ready for rest um, at night. Um, so it's a positive and comforting simile, I think, because it's suggesting quite a good parent-child relationship. Um, unlike other poems where the parent or the adult could be seen as quite neglectful. Uh, linking it back to the birds again, there is reference to nature and the green world. And of course, that conflicts with the filth 
and poverty that Blake often depicts in the city, such as in London, for example. Um, and we are fin We finish with the, the two uh, couplets, and sport no more seen on the darkening green. And if you notice, echoing is used twice at the end of the other two standards, and here it's changed to darkening. So again, it, it, uh, that repetition of echoing ends, and it hearkens to the fact that nightfall is upon us. But it could also represent metaphorically uh, the fall of childhood innocence and the imposing world of experience or adulthood um, around the corner. Um, so the, the poem ends slightly perhaps more ominously than how it started, and it has both literal and figurative meanings. The rhyme scheme is A, A, B, B, C, C and so on, which you could argue creates a very melodic and jubilant mood. A lot of, um, you know, it's called the songs of innocence and experience because they are quite song-like, a lot of them, like nursery rhymes, like melodies, like ballads. So Blake will often use very traditional rhyme schemes, quite simple rhyme schemes and rhythms in order to create that kind of nursery rhyme like lyricism that um, doesn't just um, isn't just used in his poetry, but a lot of romantic poets as well of the era. OK, so that hopefully is a useful uh, summary of the Echo and Green part of the Songs of Innocence.